I think she doesn't want to be white trash anymore or something. And I told her, like, you're white, honey. Just deal with it. So power is addictive and power like money exposes you for who you really are and after this review you'll see what I mean welcome back to for the nostalgia where we discuss 90s classic films from a big age perspective since it's the end of October already um, I thought I'd do another Halloween appropriate movie and the craft definitely fits the bill and while it was clear that Nancy was the villain in this story, over time I realized how complex her character was and why she was so desperate to have access to magic and power and how that led to her downfall. So let's get into it. So the movie starts off with Sarah and she's coming from San Francisco. Her family has just moved to LA and as she's settling into her new home, she gets this weird visit from this creepy guy. I mean, he just walks up to their house and he tells her about a vision he had about her, warning her about snakes and how she'll be surrounded by them. And her dad ends up kicking him out the house, but what we didn't know was that that was basically a warning before destruction, you know, but we'll see him again later. So Sarah is attending a new Catholic school and she decides to go to school before she receives her uniforms so it kind of makes her stick out like a sore thumb so it's obvious to everyone that she's new and this is where we get a glance of i'll call them misfits rochelle bunny and nancy everyone finds them creepy and they are into magic and witchery deep already and currently looking for a four to complete this ritual so that they can become powerful and all that good stuff so we fast forward to Sarah who's in French class and she's in the back, you know, trying to play, I guess, in the background. And here's where we meet Chris and his friends who are, I guess, the popular boys in school. Let me say this. <laughs> Chris? Chris is fine. Chris is fine, okay? He's definitely a cutie. He was also in Scream with Nev Campbell. Who plays bunny and it's crazy how the same people who were in multiple movies around the same time just floated from one set to the next but back to the story so chris scopes the new girl sarah and sees fresh meat so he's on it and while in class sarah is not paying attention in her own world and she starts levitating her pencil Bunny sees her and notices how she's making the pencil stand on its own and spin and she gasps which breaks Sarah's attention. So Bunny is excited because she thinks Sarah is the fourth and she runs to tell Rochelle and Nancy. In a later class, Sarah spots Bunny again and walks up to the girls and asks them can she sit with them and they just stare at her like they ain't never seen him before. Just rude as hell. I guess they were just, they weren't used to people like coming up to them and wanting to sit by them. I don't know. So she just walks off. And during lunch, Chris comes up to her to talk. And this is where we learn a little bit more about the other girls. So Chris refers to them as, I quote, the bitches of Eastwick. I just, you know, real disrespectful. And basically gives an overview of each girl. So, Nancy is the slut. Bunny is covered in scars, burn scars that she got when she was little. So, people think she's a freak. And he totally dismisses Rochelle. I wonder why. Side note, Rachel True was and will forever be that girl. No debate. So anyway, Chris invites Sarah to watch him play football. She tries to play like she don't want to go, but girl, stop playing. So while she's watching Chris play football, she formally meets the girls. 
Rochelle ends up apologizing for Nancy, which is weird because Nancy has a mouth and I'm sure she can speak for herself. But Nancy decides to warn Sarah about Chris and she slick alludes to him giving her an STI. Now at this point, it's hard to tell if she's genuinely wanting to warn her or if she's blocking, but anywho. The girls invite her shopping and Sarah tries to turn them down, but she ends up going with them. And Nancy ends up noticing her scars on her wrist and she tells the girls that she self-harmed before and Nancy is impressed. Weird, but okay. They end up going to an occult shop and Bunny tries to convince Sarah to put a book in her bag. Now, look, I don't, if I was Sarah, I'd be like, I don't know y'all. Like, we not that cool. We not friends. Like, this would have been a red flag for me. Girl, put it in your bag. I don't know you like that. And Sarah ends up getting weirded out by everything in the shop. So she ends up running into the shop owner who instantly picks up on her energy and she notices the ring she's wearing and she tells her that it was her mother's and she starts to teach her about candles and from here she knows what Sarah doesn't know at this point that she's a natural witch. So she and the girls hang out all day. It's now evening and they are walking and she runs into the same creepy dude that was at her house at the beginning of the movie. He again tells her about his vision and that in his dream, she's dead and she's terrified as I, I will be too because I don't know this guy. And you coming up to me saying I'm going to die and all this stuff like I would be weirded out. I would have ran and she ends up running away and the guy goes after her and there's a moment where she stops running and both her and the girl stare at him and in that moment he gets ran over by this truck. Now, it's not clear if it's just her natural magic that did this or if it was a mix of her magic and the girl's energy that did this, but it happens. And now all the girls are convinced that she's there for it. So later on, Nancy tells Sarah about a ritual that she wants to do called invoking the spirit. And she claims that a being called Mano takes everything that's wrong with your life and makes it all better again. Now, Sarah ain't trying to hear this shit, you know, she thinks that this is impossible and she ends up leaving the girls because they're acting weird. So later on, Sarah is hanging out with Chris and they're hanging out with other classmates and Chris asks her to go to his house. Now, Sarah is un uncomfortable with that idea and declines and she's not rude, she's not mean, she's just like, you know... I don't know if I want to do that just yet. You know, I, I think I just want to go home. And that was that. So Chris acts kind of funny about it, but he doesn't pressure her. And his ego is hurt, okay? And dudes do crazy things when their ego is challenged. Every time. Every time. And like I said, she wasn't even disrespectful. But he was like... You know the audacity for you not to want to come home with me so the next day baby shit hits the fan and the girls come up to Sarah asking about her date with Chris meanwhile Sarah is wondering how they even know that she was on a date with Chris and then she notices that people are looking at her funny and so Nancy tells her that Chris basically told everybody that they had sex and she was horrible at it and then she told her that he did the same thing to her so Sarah is not going. So she goes to confront Chris, this dude. He has created a whole scenario out of nothing. He was but hurt that she rejected him. And now he's told everyone, everybody, the whole school that they had sex. Like really? What does that even do for you? Dude was mad corny for that. So we end up going to Rochelle, who's at swim practice, and one of her teammates is racist, Gis. And this scene irritates me, obviously, because even to this day, schools do not address bullies at all. They let things happen over and over and over, but when the bully finally gets their ass beat, here they go with the line, we don't condone violence. I can't tell. 
But anyway, so after practice, they are in the showers and Laura makes a comment about finding one of Rochelle's nappy hairs. Why are you doing this to me, Laura? Because I don't like Negroids. We go to Bunny, who's about to undergo this new procedure for her scars, and the treatment looks super painful. And clearly it is. It's basically a needle stabbing her over and over, and scar tissue is thick, so I imagine that the needle will have to go deep, and I can only imagine how that felt. So this is where we finally get a peek into Nancy's life and basically her mother's a drunk and she's coming in hot in this scene. She's mad at her boyfriend, Nancy's stepdad, because the lights went out and she thinks he forgot to pay the bill. Oh and the stepdad is a creep but we'll see this side of him later but it's here that we realize that Rochelle, Bunny and Nancy all have their reasons for pursuing magic and power. So we cut to the girls in class and they end up inviting Sarah on a field trip of sorts. I mean, these girls are just off doing their own thing, honey. And it's movies like these that make me realize that we were so much more relaxed in the 90s. Child, we used to be outside. Like, for real. Now my kids can't even go to the mailbox without me. But anyway, they start doing different rituals with each other, one of which involves drinking each other's blood. Like, what the fuck? I love my folks, but I'll never love them that much. Never. And it's here that each girl makes a wish, if you will, and takes a drink. Rochelle wishes to not hate those who hate her, and she's understandably bothered by Laura and all her, like, racist comments and behavior. And Sarah wishes to love herself more and receive love from others. Specifically, Chris. Yeah, she's gonna regret this later. Bunny wishes to be beautiful inside and out, and she's highly insecure because of her scars, which is fair. But Nancy, child, Nancy wishes for all the power of Mano. It's clear that she wants out of the life that she currently has and feels this is what she needs to get there. Side note, I don't think Nancy started off as a villain. I don't think she was laying in wait to turn on Sarah. I think she was traumatized and she approached the world differently because of that. In this scene, she was able to show empathy towards Bunny and even Sarah and Rochelle. I think she actually was a good friend, but certain things will bring out the worst in people. But we'll see that later. Baby, look, the next day, shit starts getting interesting. The magic hits Chris. Chris is looking like, wait a minute, is that, is that Sarah? Is, is that Bay over there? Baby, he is gone. Just staring her up and down? He's officially obsessed. Warning to all, love spells are nothing to fuck with. If you gotta do anything extra for someone to feel love for you, they are not the one. Obsession kills. Obsession will blow up your life. It's not worth it. But baby, Chris is up Sarah's ass. He's following her around, carrying her and Bunny's books. His boys are making fun of him. Like, dude, what you doing? He don't care. He's where he wants to be. Meanwhile, Nancy and Rochelle are noticing that the magic is working. So later we go to Sarah who sees Laura walking in the hall and she ends up pulling a strand of her hair. Laura is such, such a bitch. Anyway, later Sarah braids Laura's strand of hair into Rochelle's hair and the girls are hanging out and we cut to Bunny who is desperately trying to get rid of her scars. And this scene was so heartbreaking because you really felt for her here. And again, Nancy is being a good friend, showing empathy and all that, but just wait for it. So baby, the next day, baby, shit hits the fan. Laura is, you know, walking around being her basic, racist, caring, and training self. And this is where I get my whole entire life. Baby, she takes that swimming cap off. Her hair is gone. It's looking like it's giving newborn baby. <laughs> it's giving balding man. 
Baby, she's having a meltdown. Meanwhile, Rochelle gives us an Olympic worthy dive, unbothered as she should be. Then we go to Bunny, who's back at the doctor to see how the first round of treatment went. And they are looking at the progress of the treatment and observing her scars. And they start to wipe off the scar tissue. It's like literally falling off like dry skin. And honestly, this doctor is thinking she has founded this groundbreaking treatment, but it's magic. I can only imagine what happened when they tried this on someone else and they didn't get the same results. Patients were big mad. All that pain with no results, child. Baby, Bunny came back to school with a new attitude. The skin was skinny. And it's here where we start to notice the shift in Nancy. She is clearly frustrated and upset that everybody's spells and magic is working, but she's still in the same situation, dealing with the same thing. I don't know. I think she doesn't want to be white trash anymore or something. And I told her, like, you're white, honey. Just deal with it. So we go to Nancy back at home and her creepy ass stepdad tries to peek up under her robe and her mother does nothing, nothing. Baby, the way I would have heated up a pot of grits right quick, listen. So the stepdad gets upset and starts going after Nancy's mom like he's gonna hit her and Nancy ends up screaming and in turn causes the kitchen to blow up and at the same time causes her stepdad to have a heart attack. Now, while Rochelle, Bunny, and Sarah, who's a natural witch, were able to get what they wanted innocently and without causing harm to others, you know, I don't consider Laura losing her hair harm, baby. That was, that was what you get. That was karma. But Nancy, on the other hand, her wish was granted at a cost. So after the stepdad dies, they learned that they will get $175,000 from his insurance policy. Now, $175K back then in the 90s, baby, you could have got a house, a car, and still had some change left over. Now, baby, you're getting a shack. That's your student loan. You're still in the hole. But since this is the 90s, Nancy and her mom move into this luxury loft that was probably the bulk of their money right there. And it's here that we see that Nancy does not see it for her mom. And Nancy's mom desperately wants to be the cool mom. Let's have a little housewarming party. Sorry, mom. <laughs> this is where Nancy tells the girls about glamour and how to do it. So they try it out and Sarah's able to change her hair color and the girls are hype about it. This is important because Nancy uses glamour against Sarah later. So we cut to Chris acting like he's Romeo, throwing rocks at her windows and shit. The love spell is still active. Uh, can I help you? No, nobody can help me. She later goes back to the occult shop with the girls and asks the shop owner how to undo a love spell. Baby, it's not that easy. You have opened up the floodgates. It's a wrap. It's here where we see that the shop owner has already picked up on Nancy's bad energy. Nancy wants Chris to suffer, and the shop owner warns them that whatever they send out, they will get back threefold. Nancy don't hear her though, so she's interested in this book about invoking the spirit. The shop owner warns her that it's dangerous and that she is not experienced enough for it, but Nancy don't care. She is hungry for more power. She is slowly changing for the worse. Sarah ends up telling the girls about the dreams she's been having. And these dreams involve being surrounded by snakes, similar to the creepy guy's vision. And this is where Nancy says that she should respect the serpent. So at this point, if you didn't know, snakes represent evil. And Nancy is clearly with the snakes. So the girls get together to join in the invoking of the spirit and Nancy ends up getting struck by lightning. And the next morning the girls wake up to see Nancy walking on water like she's Jesus and whales have been pushed ashore and Nancy has all this power now and it's not going to be good.
So after all this happens, Sarah starts to notice the girls are changing for the worse. Bunny is turning into a straight narcissist, and Nancy is becoming devoid of empathy and taking more risk. Sarah reminds them that things will come back threefold and that they should be careful. But Nancy doesn't see this as good advice. She thinks Sarah is trying to win over the girls and make them side with her. And Nancy is starting to become paranoid and power hungry. She then suggests that Sarah leaves the circle and she doesn't like how everything is going. And she decides to play a dangerous game of red light and green light not caring at all about putting their lives in danger. The next day, Rochelle sees Laura and baby Laura is going through it. Rochelle starts to feel a little bad about it, but me personally, I wouldn't give a damn. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Because I don't like Negroids. Don't hit your head on the board. Stupid bitch. One thing I noticed in this scene is that when Rochelle looks in the mirror, the mirror doesn't show her reflection. It's almost like she's looking through the mirror. It's weird. So Chris is still obsessed with what's new. He convinces Sarah to meet up with him and they end up going to a rendezvous point and it's clear that he's losing himself in her, literally. So he tries to push up on her and ends up trying to SA her, and she ends up getting away. But listen to me, love spells are not worth it. I repeat, they are not worth it. So baby, word gets back to Nancy, and Nancy wants all the smoke. So Nancy goes to this party to get Chris, and at this point, I can't tell if she's on a power trip, or if she's trying to hurt him because he hurt Sarah, or what. But Nancy pulled up. She ends up finding him and he's lit. He's drunk or high or both. And she takes him upstairs. Whole time, he don't know what's going on. Nancy switched her face to Sarah's. Meanwhile, the girls are pulling up to the party to find Nancy. And did people really just pull up to other people's houses like this? This is wild. So anyway, Rochelle runs into Laura who has on this god awful wig and tries to apologize. And it's funny how it took all of this to make you realize your shitty behavior. So Nancy tricks Chris into sleeping with her and the girls finally find her. And as they walk in, the glamor falls off and Chris realizes he slept with Nancy, not Sarah. And Nancy then tells Chris that Sarah put a love spell on him and Chris fucks up and calls Nancy jealous. Yeah, he did. So after all this, Sarah is traumatized. She feels guilty about the love spell and feels horrible that he's dead at the hands of Nancy and their magic. Okay, so boom, this is where things start getting interesting. So Sarah tries to bind Nancy to prevent her from hurting others and herself. Honestly, this should have been done after y'all seen her walking on water, but I digress. She ends up having a vision of the girls where they come to her room and strangle her. At this point, it's looking like Nancy and the girls know that she tried to do magic on her. So the next day at school, Sarah is stressed out. She's realizing she's in deep with this mess and the girls end up finding her in the bathroom. Sarah confronts them about Chris and they start to play dumb, claiming that it was an accident. Basically, Rochelle and Bunny have turned into Nancy's minions, and technically they already were, but it's more obvious now. They end up confirming that they know she tried to do magic on them, and they give her a warning. Sweet dreams, Sarah. How have you been sleeping? Honestly, they wouldn't have access to magic if it weren't for Sarah. They're being real ungrateful right now. So she goes back to the shop and meets with the owner and tells her about the girls and what's been going on. And this is where the owner tells Sarah that she is a natural witch and that her mother was one as well. 
and she tells her how she can use the same ritual that Nancy used, invoking of the spirit. And instead of taking it to a dark place, she can use it for good. So they start to do the ritual and shit hits the fan. She gets another vision that the store is on fire. Obviously another glamour trick and Sarah runs out. I'm thinking they are able to view her remotely or something. Is it a vibe or are they able to transport to her location maybe? They were on Sarah's ass. She couldn't make not one move. So Sarah runs home. Nobody's there, of course. So the phone rings and Nancy tells her that her dad died in a plane crash. And so Sarah turns on the TV and sees news footage of a plane crash and immediately starts breaking down. And she cannot cope with everything that's happening. I mean, she's almost in a fetal position. Then she starts seeing snakes everywhere, on the floor, on the stairs, in the bathroom, everywhere. And the girls are turning her nightmares into reality and using them against her. Nancy is literally trying to drive her crazy. Her and the girls are basically trying to get Sarah to unalive herself. And Nancy even cuts her wrist. She tries to convince Sarah that she killed Chris and that... Then she went even lower saying how she killed her mom when she was born. And this is all an attempt to get Sarah to her weakest point. And Sarah herself starts to become overwhelmed and forgets just how powerful she is. I mean, she is a natural witch. And she is starting to struggle with determining what's real and what's not. Sarah goes to her room and she is overwhelmed at this point. It's here where she gets a vision from her mother. Meanwhile, downstairs, Rochelle is over it and doesn't want to participate anymore. Nancy is not trying to hear that though, so she forces the girls to go up and check on Sarah. And while this is happening, Sarah starts the ritual of invoking the spirit. And as the girls are coming to check on Sarah, they walk past the mirror and see themselves. Bunny sees her scars again, but this time they've taken over her whole face. And Rochelle is bald. And from here, they don't want the smoke, and so they decide to leave the house. So Sarah is back, okay? The scars are disappearing. They're starting to fade. And it's at this point Nancy starts to feel the shift and starts getting nervous. Nancy tries to play her sympathy card with Sarah, tries to convince her that she's done and she won't do this again. But as soon as Sarah starts to buy, Nancy goes batshit. So they start fighting and then Nancy uses her magic to make like a big piece of furniture slide into Sarah while she is against the wall. And Nancy thinks she's dead for a moment until she tries to find her body. And then she realizes she's using glamour. Sarah ends up going back into her body just before Nancy tries to stab her and she drop kicks that ass and finishes the binding spell. Nancy is finished. Finally. This whole part of the movie was stressful and it low key turned into a horror movie towards the end. Sometime after Rochelle and Bunny show up at Sarah's house, the nerve, the audacity. They are looking pathetic and wanted to apologize for what they did. Hey, Rose, how you doing? Hi, Hi Mr. Mr. Bailey. Bailey. And you know that thing on TV about the plane crash was just a glamour, right? It's a practical joke. Honey. You just spoke to my daddy in front of me. I think I figured it out. So basically, they reveal their hand and ask Sarah, does she still have magic because they don't. Baby Sarah pays them dust, and they're walking away, and Rochelle petty ass insinuates that Sarah probably doesn't even have magic anyway. Child Sarah heard that, and she changed the weather on their ass, and damn near struck them with a branch. Sarah was like, play with your mama, not me. Now doubt that. Good luck finding another third and fourth. <laughs> she warns them and tells them not to end up like Nancy. And then we cut to Nancy. Poor Nancy, it, she's where she belongs, truly. Honestly, the actress played this role so well, and by the end of the movie, I really could not stand her. 
And I genuinely thought she was crazy. So that's the end of the movie. And here are my final thoughts. Power is one hell of a drug. Not everyone can handle it. And Nancy could not handle it at all. She was once used to her life just being horrible. So once she got a taste of something different, she became addicted and wanted more and more. And it completely took her over. Like I said before, I don't believe that Nancy was this horrible person before. She had her ways, mostly stemming from her home life and the trauma she experienced. But for the most part, she did look out for the girls. But like I said before, power like money exposes you for who you truly are. Now for Sarah, Sarah had plenty of warnings before all this stuff took place. The snake that she saw when she initially came to LA and then the guy warned her two times about her being surrounded by snakes. Even though she didn't truly get the message behind it at first, she did receive those warnings. And so she should have looked deeper into that. Especially as the girls started to like reveal their bad sides to her. Like she should have been ready. Like the binding spell should have been done a lot sooner. And also... Something that we can learn from Sarah is just to be careful what you wish for. Like, you can't sit up there and try to do a love spell on somebody that doesn't see it for you. And I was truly confused, looking back on this, like, why was she so bothered by Chris and wanting him to like her? Like, that didn't connect for me because I could understand if they had, like, this romance like they went on like plenty of dates and you know they went through this whole like love story but we didn't see that we literally just saw them meet up you know once after school and then he tried to get her to come over and then he just went bad so I didn't get why she was like obsessed with making him want her but Besides all that, like everything has a purpose. Like if this person doesn't like you or if this person isn't giving you the attention that you want, I'm pretty sure that there's going to be somebody else that's going to be way better than this person. And she didn't even give it an opportunity to turn out like that. But anywho, that's all I have to say about this movie, y'all. I'm going to go in here and eat me a chicken salad. <laughs> And chill out but I want to thank you for watching this video please subscribe share and like and I'll see you guys next time bye